Hi guys, uh, it's Tam again and the gentleman at CigarsIndia.in, India's uh, premier and trusted retailer of uh, cigars online, have uh, asked me to do another review. And uh, the choice for this review is the Drew Estates uh, Nica Rustica cigar. I'll just uh, put it up. I don't know if this is in focus or not. not. But the interesting thing about this is the, uh, the foot is unfinished and it's got a rather chunky uh, pigtail at the end as well. So an interesting, uh, interesting character to this smoke. The, it's a Madura wrapper. It's a uh, 60, uh, sorry, it's a uh, 6 by 52 ring gauge and it's uh, technically known as a Prajero, which describes its uh, shape. Now, why would uh, Drew Estates want to produce this? According to them, they wanted something which was uh, medium to full strength uh, and the aim was to showcase uh, the natural uh, Nicaraguan tobaccos uh, from the Esteli and, uh, if my pronunciation is correct, the Jalapa regions uh, in, in Nicaragua. The, uh, the cover of, of, the, of the cigar, the wrapper, sorry, is a Connecticut broadleaf and it inputs a subtle and a natural sweetness and spice to the, the cigar. Again, this is what the advisory has been put by the company and various other reviewers. The rationale itself for the cigar, why the name Nika Rustica, I think it gives it away um, in itself. Its aim is to be rustic, its aim is to be unpolished, its aim is to be unrefined. And this is not, these are not my words, Th these are the words from the Drew Estate uh, guys themselves by saying that. And what they wanted was something for the hardcore tobacco lover. So this is what they produced it for and uh, hopefully it should uh, deliver on that front. The construction is beautiful, so even though it goes by the name of Nika Rustica, um, you, I can't fault the construction. Maybe there was a, the, the, the foot of the cigar and the uh, pigtail maybe a slight homage to giving that flavor of something more rustic and quaint rather than the typical varieties of cigars available, but uh, the construction can't be flawed. Going by the smell of the uh, Of the uh, of the smoke, I get a lot of chocolate. I get uh, toasted tobacco, and there's a funky barnyard smell as well. Someone actually described it as a funky barnyard smell. I think maybe that may be the natural characteristic of uh, of the smoke, but there is something uh, quite tangy about this uh, cigar. So very interesting. If I just uh, give me a moment, uh, I'll light it and uh, get back to you. I just uh, had to uh, stop the, uh, the recording because I wanted uh, Adelash to actually just uh, verify or cross check that uh, what I said was correct about that funky barnyard smell. Okay, maybe not funky barnyard, but certainly tangy and there's a saucy kind of element to it. So uh, it's going to be an interesting smoke. So let me, uh, without further ado, uh, start. Just moisten the end. Just cut the smoke. Unfortunately, I can't cut it the way I normally cut it because of the pigtail. So I just do the usual way of cutting it. I always like to inhale the cigar before I actually light it, just to get some extra clues on what may be on offer or things that I may actually miss uh, when I actually uh, when the cigar is actually lit. So what am I picking up? There is a tangy element to it coming out through this cigar. It certainly is chocolatey, and there's certainly a toasted, uh, toasted kind of uh, tobacco. Rich is what I'm getting. And there's a kind of sweetness as well, but it's very uh, un unpronounced. It's just in the background. 
so it should be an interesting smoke. I'm certainly getting uh, toasted tobacco and chocolate. But let me just run, give you a rundown of uh, some of the other characteristics of the cigar or some other information that you may be interested in knowing. So I gave you a description of the color, Maduro 6, uh, six inches by 52 ring gauge and a Pareo shape. The Kappa is actually Connecticut broad, uh, broadleaf medium. The capota is Mexican San Andreo Negro leaf. The uh, tripa is grade A Nicaraguan, so both from the Esteli and the Jalapa region. And the strength, uh, they've uh, said, is uh, medium to full. And I can actually, uh, I would agree with that. The cigar style was supposed to be potent robust and certainly fulfilling. It's still early stages yet, but uh, I don't think I'll be disappointed with this. <coughs> Besides the, uh, uh, the characteristics that I've already mentioned, another characteristic of this is the sheer volume of smoke, the plumes of smoke which are actually coming up and just infusing the whole room that I'm in. I think uh, this is certainly a cigar which is to be savoured and shared by all those in the room, for good or bad. Um, the Cigar Smokers is just going to be a pleasure. It's certainly spicy, but not peppery. It's got uh, some sweetness, which is very toned down, and the predominant characteristics are the uh, toasted uh, tobacco and coffee. I'll let this settle down now and uh, get back to you in a short while for the next stage uh, and go through the difference, differences in the changes of the cigar. The cigar settled in uh, and there's this massive change in uh, the quality of the smoke from something that was quite potent at the very beginning. It's just dropped and it's become creamy and very mellow. <coughs> Excuse me. The flavours have actually toned down quite a lot. Um, it's, they've become very much more subtle and the overwhelming character, as I said before, is this creamy, smooth uh, taste which uh, is just gliding over my uh, tongue and just hitting me at the back of the throat. It, and not in an unpleasant way. Sometimes you, I would usually encounter that if I was smoking a pretty acrid, very dry smoke, dry cigar and uh, the first place that would hit me is the back of the throat and it's quite, um, can be quite unpleasant but this uh, is the total opposite I'm getting more coffee now I'm also getting more uh, toasted tobacco so the sweetness has actually dropped down from the time it started to this stage here the sweetness has dropped it's become more mellow, it's become creamier, and it's also uh, has that uh, toasted tobacco kind of uh, character. So initially I was about to say, well actually this is at the, even though the, the guys at Drew Estate describe it as medium to full bodied, and a number of uh, other reviewers have said it's, it's quite uh, rich, powerful and uh, full bodied. Um, 
it, it's it's a I, I'd say it's more com uh, complex than that because it started off very full bodied and then it's just uh, toned itself down and become very gentle so bordering now more to the, towards a medium strength of the smoke so I could understand why the guys at Drew Estates would say it's medium to full bodied it allows such a wide uh, spectrum of change within the smoke, which is remarkable. I mean, the complexity on this is brilliant. Again, some reviewers have said that uh, it isn't that complex, but just going by this smoke, uh, I would uh, tend to disagree with them. Now it's picking up again. Just a slight sweetness, like a, a bit of cinnamon. Yeah, cinnamon. Uh, again, that cream is there, and uh, that uh, dark chocolate. Let me get back to you at the next stage. Oh, this is a, this really is a very intriguing cigar. It's um, an analogy would be like a exquisitely constructed uh, wristwatch or timepiece from Switzerland. There are so many things going on there. I, I for the life of me, I can't understand why some some commentators have said it's um, it's it's not a very complicated smoke. I, I don't think so at all. There are so many things going on all at the same time. There's a caramelness, there's a caramel uh, character coming out of it, which has moved away from the cream to the caramel. So that's got that sweetness and it's also uh, kind of burnt, you could say. So that's why move away from uh, cream to caramel. It had that peppery quality, which just uh, 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 peaked and then it's dropped down again. It literally is a case of, uh, after every few puffs of this uh, smoke, I, I'm getting different uh, flavor profiles and characters. It's just remarkable. If you looked at the other uh, review reviews I made before, uh, I did mention that uh, you had novice, intermediate, and uh, seasoned smokers. I would certainly suggest this as uh, smoke for uh, intermediate to seasoned smoker, because uh, this, uh, this cigar is very under the radar and uh, it should certainly be tried uh, if you want to expand your database of knowledge of and experience of various cigars from around the world. This should be definitely on that list. I hate using too many an uh, um, analogies but uh, I just can't resist with this uh, cigar because it's just proving to be such an interesting experience. <clears throat> this again is like, it's like a good jazz band where the tone is set but it allows uh, syncopation where you can actually experiment and there are uh, subtle riffs going on with the smoke and subtle changes but the, the underlying theme is still there and it's uh, like a good uh, piece of music. It's just uh, uh, delivering that uh, in the cigar. I'd say it also has reached, from the time I started smoking it, it reached its plateau very quickly and it stayed on that plateau. It hasn't dropped in any way. It hasn't, for me, it hasn't increased. It's just provided variety within those uh, parameters of a high and a low at that very high level. Hard to explain, but uh, uh, the only thing I could suggest is uh, please do try this because it just offers so much. Now again it's getting stronger. I'm getting more chocolate coming out of it, more toasted uh, tobacco. Pepper is coming back again. Caramel and the cream has died down. <clears throat> I 
let me go uh, stop now and I'll get back to you uh, when there are more significant changes. The flavor has changed yet again. Just had a few more puffs on this and now initially uh, it started off with a roasted nut kind of uh, groundnut taste but then it's changed and now it's this uh, overwhelming uh, aroma of uh, walnuts which is coming out. I don't know if you could have toasted walnuts but <laughs> there's certainly that element of walnut. It's got that slightly, it, it's not, um, that walnut bitterness right at the very end. It's just a slight hint that's coming through. I think it's picked up again. I think it's actually moved, <coughs> moved up. To, it's uh, moved up a notch. It's moved up a gear. It's uh, more powerful. Yeah, and walnuts. Go through this a bit more. So we'll get back to you shortly. Hi guys, back again. Uh, apologies for the uh, frequent cuts in this, but. I didn't want to waste your time by going through every nuance of the smoke, but there are so many changes and variations in this. It just requires us to cut this uh, video so many times because there are so many different profiles and then for the cigar to come back. It's uh, just slightly uneven, but I'm sure that will even itself out. I actually took the cigar outside of, uh, of uh, the, the tasting room and uh, I had to say, it actually imparted a better flavour to the outside environment than it, than the, than what I was expecting. I thought uh, the clean, fresh air would uh, impart some uh, interesting characters, but actually it's the other way around. The cigars actually imparted some uh, remarkable aromas and uh, plumes of smoke outside, which made the experience more pleasurable. So that's why I'm back here, uh, in, ensconced in this and cosseted in this uh, plume of smoke, which is it's just like a velvet fog, which is a beautiful experience. It certainly adds to the, uh, the character of the room, definitely. The, the smoke is just, uh, just remarkable.